Welcome. This is Travel the World Free or Almost Free for as long as you want. And I'm uh, one of your co-instructors, Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Pedology. And your other co-instructor is Ricky Shetty. Hey, Ricky. How you doing? Hi there, everyone. Great to meet everyone online uh, through the power of video chatting. Uh, my name is Ricky Shetty. I'm from Vancouver, BC, Canada, but I'm currently in northeastern Brazil in a city called Natal, N-A-T-E-L, uh, Natal, Brazil, and I'm traveling the world with my three kids under five. So I look forward to sharing uh, about our travel journey and inspiring you guys to travel as well. That's right. And I happen to be in Skofi, Macedonia, uh, just north of Greece as we're recording this. And we are friends from Vancouver. I lived in a suburb of Vancouver called Coquitlam. And uh, we thought, well, let's do a course together. And then life happened. And we, I don't know, that was like a year ago uh, on blogging. And now Ricky took off and he went that way. I took off. I went that way. And, and we said, let's tell people how you can travel the world for free. Because Ricky, I don't know about you, but I have a lot of people commenting and because I post a lot of my pictures up on Facebook and other social media and they say, oh man, I'm living my life vicariously through you, Scott. Uh, I wish I could travel. And I think, wow, like, why can't you travel? Yeah, no, I get that all the time, Scott. I'm sharing uh, pictures and video and blog posts on my social media and I get this all the time. I, I wish I could travel. I'm so jealous. Maybe someday I'll put it on my bucket list. But the problem is they don't take action. It's just watching us, but it's not the same as actually doing it. And I think all of us have suffered from that in the past. Maybe we've gone through times where we're a little bit more depressed or down and we're just watching and, and kind of like envying others. But at some point, you got to stop envying and stop being jealous and uh, stop wishing and dreaming and hoping, but implementing and deciding and uh, uh, really taking action. It's really about making the decision, buying the plane ticket, and then... Uh, making your dreams come true and uh, that happened for us on December 6, 2016. We left Vancouver, BC, Canada and now we've been uh, traveling to five different countries already. The Philippines, Hong Kong, Dubai, South Africa and now we're in beautiful Brazil. So uh, definitely want to inspire others to not just watch these videos because I would consider this course a failure. People just watched it and say, these guys were amazing, they, great, they provided great content. What I want to see is people say, we watched this video and now we're traveling too. That would be the definition of success to me, to actually see other people making the dreams come true through our little inspiration. That's right, for me as well. And, uh, you know, it's funny thinking about it because last year, my well, in 2016, my son, my youngest son bought a house and so he was out of my house. And I thought, this is the perfect opportunity. I am an empty nester and I'm going to be going. And I knew it was coming. I mean, it was obvious. He was 24. Sooner or later, he was going to leave. And I did some um, trial trips. I did a six-week trip to Machu Picchu. I did a six-week trip through Central America. And I did these because I wanted to spend time in other cities. I didn't just want to go, you know, and do the 13 countries in four days road railroad trip in Europe sort of thing. I wanted to really, you know, connect with the local people, to connect with the local culture, to see what it was like to live in some of these other places. And uh, so that meant I needed to continue to work, right? I, my business wasn't going to be like shut down. I wanted to be able to continue to do things like build websites and teach podcasting and all the rest of it. So, but I didn't know what it would be like. So I thought, well, I could take six weeks and find out and it won't be a catastrophe if I'm a failure totally and it won't be, you know, and I'll have a feel for it and I'll be able to then make changes, which is what always happens. Like, it's like, well, you know, what are your problems when you travel? Well, you don't know because, Ricky, your tr problems are way different than mine. I don't have three kids under five and a wife with me is just me, right? So, you know, I don't have to, I can just imagine what, what it must be like when you're somewhere and one of them says, Daddy, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? There's no perfect time. I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that about the empty nester thing. Uh, some people want to wait, like they want to wait till they're retired, or they wait. They want to wait till their kids go out of school. But the thing is, there is no perfect time. There'll be never enough money. There'll be never enough time. There'll be no perfect scenario of health. 
finances, time. Like, there'll always be some reason not to do it. Um, like for us, the reason not to do it is like our kids are too young or like we don't have enough money or like we're busy working. Uh, but those are all reason, reasons not to do something, right? But it, uh, the, the, like the reason to do something should outweigh the reason not to do something. And at, at some point, you just got to jump uh, because otherwise you'll just keep waiting. Like uh, for us, we had to decide like we need to do this now because it will be actually harder when they're in school and we have to pull them out of elementary or high school. And then we might have to wait till you know, like they're married and they have kids. And then all of a sudden they don't want to hang out with mommy and daddy. So it, it wasn't the perfect time. Yeah, there was the perfect time because the perfect time is the time that you actually take action. So That's for right. us, uh, it, was, it was when the kids were under five because my wife was actually on, she's actually on maternity leave. So it's perfect because uh, she has a one year off in Canada. They actually have one year paid maternity. Uh, so she's still getting a salary every month. She has a time off. And uh, the kids are young. So they were just pulled out of um, preschool, which is not a big deal. And they're actually learning a lot more now than they would in a school back in Canada. So my daughter's learning Portuguese right now. I just posted a, a video where she's talking Portuguese. And uh, our, our son is learning all about like uh, uh, the history of colonization uh, from the Portuguese to Brazil, and our little one just turned one year old, and we create all, all these pictures and videos um, and blog posts just to savor these memories. So uh, I just want to encourage people, if you're waiting for the right time, it's never going to happen. So you just have to create, I call it the dream day, and uh, create a dream day where it's like, I'm going to leave whichever city you're in, you might be in like um, London, England, or you might be in New York City, America, or you might be in Sydney, Australia, and, and you have to say, I'm going to leave Sydney, Australia on my dream trip on January 1st, 2018 or on May 5th, 2019. Or you know, you need to just pick a place and a, and a day and just work towards that. Otherwise, it'll be just someday, 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 someday. But if you're really intentional about picking a day and a time and a, a destination, it will happen much more easier because you've taken that first action. So for us, it was just we're going to leave before the end of 2016. And we worked and we uh, we made the plans and we everything came into fruition once we made the decision that we must leave by 2016. And here we are in 2017 and we are we have left <laughs> and we're on the road. That's right. So in this course, what we want to do is we want to share with you some of the thought processes that we went through as we went through the process, you know, as we went through the process of actually leaving and going on our dream trips. And we want to, you know, we'll talk about flexibility versus scheduling and planning and how it's really important that you do it to, you know, in your personality. Like self-awareness is really important. If you need to know what you're doing at five o'clock on Sunday afternoons, then you need to do a lot different planning than someone like me who hasn't really got a clue what I'm going to be doing in the next hour sometimes it's, it feels like, right? But yeah. if you if you don't have that understanding of yourself, then you cause a lot of stress and, and mental turmoil because what happens is, is you end up putting yourself into situations that are kind of running counter to the way your mind works or the way your personality is. And that's, you know, that may be great for a while. I'm now way more flexible than I was before and all the rest of it. But uh, by the same token, this is not a trip. We don't want this trip to be one that puts you into the loony bin, right? Like this is, this is a growing experience and it's supposed to be a really good experience and a fun experience. But you have to understand how you react in different situations, right? And I'm in Macedonia as an example because I discovered in the last three places I was in, in that the internet was awful. So my number one priority for this week was to find some place that had a fast internet. And somehow, Skopje, Macedonia popped up. Here is a place that has like 100 meg upload download speed, which is just like, I'm in my glory. That was the only thing I was thinking about, right? So then I found a place that's five minute walk away from here and the tra uh, the trip here it was expensive to fly here so I flew to another country and took a bus <laughs> so in the process of coming here I actually visited a country that if you'd have told me six months ago you're going to Bulgaria Scott I would have said why what are you talking about why I have no desire to go there and Sofia the, the capital city 
of Bulgaria is a gorgeous city. Just loved it. So I had, so you be, I'm open to lots of different experiences. So, uh, as you go through your travels, what's important to you will change. It'll change from day to day, week to week, month to month. You know, you're, you're going to be in some place and it's maybe a lot rougher and, and uh, rawer than you're used to. And then, you know, Next place I'm staying is a five star hotel, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or you're in some place and nobody speaks English and you know, you, the next place I'm going, I want to go someplace where I don't have to try to figure out Spanish all the time. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad you're mentioning these things because you know, travel isn't always the, the beautiful beaches with the blue skies. Some days you're going to have, uh, uh, rain. You're going to have hail. You're going to have, uh, uh, bad internet. You're going to have uh, kids screaming their heads off. You're going to get sick. Um, so all these things that are happening maybe in your home city, those things uh, will also happen in the road, and there will be challenges. And unfortunately, on social media, you don't always hear about the bad sides of travel or the challenges of travel, the struggles you'll have with maybe like loneliness or uh, homesickness or like just being frustrated at this new culture or, or struggling to connect with the locals because of language barrier. So uh, those are some of the things we'll cover in the course too, not just the, 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 the joys and the, the bliss of travel, but also how to overcome those struggles because you will have them. I guarantee you, you will have them and it's better to be prepared for the struggles in advance so you know how to deal with it because um, there will be still these emotions, there'll be still the weather. I mean, who can control the weather? But we can control our mental state of mind, like you said, the self-awareness um, and just uh, being positive. I think that's really important, no matter where you are, to be positive, especially on the road, uh, because you don't have that community support, the family support, the friendship support like you would back in your home city. So I love this course. Uh, we're going to be sharing a lot of different things. Uh, I am a specialist in the area of family travel, obviously, with traveling with three kids under five. I also uh, specialize in the area of sponsorship travel. Uh, I have a, um, uh, a blog called daddyblogger.com, which I've been running for five years. So we got a lot of our hotel sponsored, sightseeing sponsored, even some transport sponsored. So I'll be sharing about those things. Uh, even things like packing um, and uh, destinations, like where to go, when to go, um, and um, uh, just our insights into travel. And, and I know uh, Scott has some insights that he's going to share as well, right? That's right. We're going to be looking at ways that you can travel on a shoestring that sometimes is actually quite luxurious because uh, there is a lot of ways that you can get accommodation that doesn't require you staying at expensive five-star hotels. So you're going to be learning about how you could be sponsored to stay in a five-star hotel, how you could get into a five-star hotel uh, for free in, using other strategies, uh, how you can be staying in places that are incredibly remote uh, if you decide that you really wanted to dive deep into the local culture, obviously it's very hard to do that from a five-star hotel, but there are lots of really cool ways that you can do that where you're actually contributing to the local uh, village or town or society, yeah. which is really, really cool. Uh, it's, it's a, you know, it's a volunteering aspect to travel, which opens lots of doors to experiences that the person that you know, just runs from spot to spot to spot to spot to spot, who's just really, you know, there to take pictures of the Eiffel Tower and go home. Uh, and that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, diving into the cultures that you're there so that you really get a feel for their lives and everything else. Because I, I and I feel really important to, this is really an important point, is we are presented a picture of the world that is through a specific lens, the lens of our TV or Mm -hmm. we, you know, we hear it through, uh, you know, the radio or we or our newspapers, right? And when you go someplace, you get an entirely different picture. Like a friend of mine spoke at a conference in Iran a couple months ago. Well, he was amazed at how gentle and peaceful and friendly all the people that he met were. And I talked to a friend of mine who was in Pakistan, and they said, you know, we're a very peaceful people. And it's like... Mm -hmm. And nobody in North America thinks that, <laughs> you know. So we, you know, when you actually go and you visit places, like I, I had a real problem when I was in Morocco, because there were all these people, and I didn't know what it was. Like I was feeling really unsafe, right? Although there was no reason to feel that. And then I realized that all of the henchmen 
in all of the TV shows and movies for the last 10 years look like these guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it was like, ah, oh, or East European. Like I'm in East Europe right now, right? And there's this certain look. And it's like, you know, because I feel like I know all these people somehow, and it's because they're the bad guys in all of these movies. Very, very subtle. And then you start talking to them, and you watch them, and you think, wow, like these are really nice young men, or, uh, you know, people like anywhere else that you would ever be. So to me, I think one of the reasons that you should travel is for, like, world peace, understanding what's going on in other parts of the world uh, so that you can... You, and then you take that back with you to, uh, you know, because everybody, you know, is a mother or a father or a son or a daughter and they love their children or they love their parents. And we some, sometimes forget that. Yeah. No, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, we had so many uh, people say, like, South Africa is dangerous. Brazil is not safe. Don't take your kids there. And really, when we came uh, to South Africa and now in Brazil, this, these are some of the most generous, kind, loving people we've ever met. And we were completely safe. Like We've been going to beaches. We even stayed in a favela in a guest house. And we've been uh, traveling for the last month. And there was no issues of danger. Sometimes I feel more dangerous walking around in my own city of Vancouver than I do here in Rio de Janeiro or Sao Paulo or El Salvador. So it, it is really that paradigm shift that will happen in your mind, your heart, your spirit. And, um, and, and and the only way that can really happen is to travel because you can watch movies, you can uh, watch. But until you step foot in the streets of Rio or in Macedonia, you won't understand it. Uh, so it's definitely about changing uh, your mindset and your heart towards other people and towards the world and contributing and making a difference. So I look forward to sharing and I, I know Scott does too. And I look forward to uh, connecting with all of you guys who are watching.